Greetings, brothers. Welcome to the Blood Angels Commander channel. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Dark Ginger in the house. Albino, your list up first, bro. Nice to see you. How are you? Uh, how is everybody tonight? Um, I have... Oh, loads of people just showed up. It was like two people in the chat, then all of a sudden there's ten people in the chat. Cool. Good evening, folks. Flowbrain, what's happening? Rezio, good evening to you, sir, indeed. Um, how's things? Fox, hello. I'll give everybody like two minutes to filter in here. I'm just finishing building an intercessor, actually. So, uh, I'm supposed to be doing speed painting this week. I need to have an intercessor ready to speed paint. I don't know how that's going to go because I suck at painting fast. Uh, but, so I was building this intercessor. It's actually really difficult to see this guy with this light. Um, Miles, good evening. Rob, what's happening? Just in for a two-day GT, finished seventh place. Well played, Rob. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty hard to finish it near the top with Blood Angels right now, being that we're like a 41% win rate army, right? So, three and two isn't bad at all, I feel like. And uh, seventh place isn't bad at all either, right? Congrats, Rob. Uh, yeah, it's because I haven't embraced the airbrush yet. I mean, I don't have an airbrush. So, I mean... Um, I, don't know if, I don't know how I'm going to feel about the speed painting. I think I'm too much of a perfectionist for speed painting, but that's why I'm supposed to be trying it. So, anyways, we're here to look at about the army lists, aren't we? We do that every Sunday. Uh, it's kind of going to be interesting as we get to this very end of the season where, like, uh, how would you say? As we get closer and closer to 10th edition, I guess every army list that we review becomes less and less relevant. But we'll continue for a few weeks yet, at least, I guess. Hey, Benno, good evening. To Hit to Wounds tuning in on Twitch. I always appreciate you guys tuning in on Twitch. Thank you for that. Um, Rob's knackered. Yes, I mean, three games in a couple of days is knackering, Rob. You guys can all see the screen okay, right? Um, I th think that I might, as we get like one or two weeks away from 10th edition res, I might not even do like a weekly tactics video. I might just, I was thinking about having a week where like, I just hob like, cause I work on this channel pretty much every night. Right. So I was thinking like, maybe I should do a week where I just hobby every night. Um, because I mean, Anything that I try and make is going to become irrelevant as soon as 10th edition comes out. So we might get to that. And I want to get more shit finished, honestly, before we get to 10th edition as well. Because you guys know I have a giant backlog of stuff. So, um, yeah, I haven't entirely figured out what I'm going to do or how we're going to do it. But I was thinking something like that. Um, and it might also be good, like, if I don't have to create any pre-produced videos for a few weeks, it might help me... Uh, might help me be like really motivated to make 10th edition videos. I don't think I'm gonna need any help being motivated to make 10th edition videos, but uh, nonetheless, it might help. Anyway, all right, are we ready to get into some army lists? Albino wants to finish his backlog before 10th. I would love to finish my backlog before 10th. I'll tell you right now, dude, it's not happening. So my backlog is way too big to finish. Um, I need a year off my day job. I mean, I don't know how how will ever, you know. I don't know how I'll ever wangle a year off. I mean, I, I don't think I ever will have a year off. But yeah, that's how that's how big my backlog is. That's how long it would take me probably to catch up. Um, I think I've got about eight thousand points. And I, do you know what? I, I suppose if I didn't have a job, I could probably do like three or four thousand points in a month. But with a job like taking up forty five hours a week, it's pretty hard, right? Um. I suppose 50 hours a week when you actually include like travel time to the job, etc, etc, etc. Alright, we get into this first army list. Um, cool. A year off the day job and the family would almost do the backlog, yeah it might. Uh, Alright, so here's the first submission 
Uh, it's been a pleasure watching the channel grow since the beginning of 9th edition. Yeah, it was right around 9th we started this channel, wasn't it? So it's just one edition we've had together. I wanted to move away from the Sangre Priest and encourage myself not to rush everything forward too quickly in my games. That's fair enough. Um, and this was what I came up with. I think that if you even have a Sangre Priest, you don't need to rush things forward too quickly. I, f I feel like. Uh, so you've got the captain on the bike. Uh, with Infernal Pistol, Rites of War, Armour and Dominus. It's a, it's a good build for the Captain, it's the build I run. Uh, hopefully soon he'll be retired for Dante, right? Good evening, Dirty Wizard, how are you? Uh, we have a Librarian with Veil of Time, Null Zone, Psychic Fortress. He's got the Infernal Pistol in there. He's also got Psychic Mastery in there, so it's, that's probably the best way you can run this Library. Uh, and then you've got the Primaris Tech Marine with Quake Bolts. Interesting, I ran these exact three characters in a tournament list not all that millions of years ago. Uh, I do like these three characters together. Uh, I think they're good. Uh, two squads of infiltrators. I mean, that's all. I say that's obvious, but I mean, some people maybe it's not obvious to some people. Uh, you've got two contemptors with multi melters. Interesting. Uh, it's nice that they don't profile. I guess you're maybe you're running them towards the enemy. I guess it's nice that they don't have um, CP requirements. Uh, you've got that's six aggressors with the bolters. Uh, Death Company with all hammers, cool. The Judas ER with Selfless Valor, cool. Uh, and gives us the basically 9 inch fight last potential uh, with this heroic intervention. Um, Sangre Guard with all infernal pistols, 5 of them. That's what I'm running at the moment, 5 of all infernal pistols. You've got the Scout Squads with some wacky stuff. The Sergeant can take a Combi Metal and an infernal pistol? Okay, didn't know that. I mean, I guess it's, you can take two Infernal Pistols, so yeah, probably that's valid right now. That's so, that's so weird. A Space Marine can't take an Infernal Pistol and a Combi Melta, but apparently a Scout Sergeant can, because that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it'll be valid. Uh, we've got the Battle Predator, Hunter Killer Missile. I think you've missed... Oh no, the Hunter Killer Missile is free on the ball. Sorry, it's the, it's five, the Hunter Killer Missile costs 5 points on the Whirlwind, but it's free on the ball, Predator. Uh, I guess that's a Games Workshop mistake. Um, you've got a Repulsor Executioner in there. I'm not sure I love that pick right now. Um, yeah, it's a lot of points still, the Executioner. And no invulnerable save means it's very vulnerable. It's funny, no invulnerable save means it's very vulnerable, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can get on board with the Repulsor Executioner. I did try and play a Repulsor as Black Templars, because I felt to myself like a uh, Repulsor in Black Templars is arguably the most survivable way you can really have an Impulsor, right? Because Black Templars get that built-in 5-up feel no... Sorry, 5-up and Vulnerable save. And guess what? The Repulsor died in turn 1 anyway with the Invulnerable save. So, yes, you've got Psychic Fortress, which might help, but I guess certain armies will still blow up a Repulsor before you ever get to do anything with it. So, not a huge fan of the Repulsor Executioner. Um, you got the Whirlwind... And then you got Land Speeder Storm, obviously, for those scouts. Okay. Uh, Inks, good evening. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're looking at army lists. It's Sunday night. Uh, standard sort of Sunday night thing that we do. And we're just discussing how that might change as we get closer to 10th. And it might change. Uh, I don't exactly know what, what I'll end up doing or what, I'm, what exactly I'm thinking towards 10th. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, regardless, I'm really excited for 10th. I think it's going to possibly be the best edition of Warhammer 40k we've ever had. I really think that. Uh, I think it's also going to be really balanced. Um, as I was going through this list, it's different. It's definitely a different list. Uh, it's a bit more of a balanced list, which I'm usually a big, big advocate. Ad advocate? Advocate, I think. Sorry. English is failing me tonight. I'm usually a big advocate for... You know what I'm trying to say. I, can't, I, I don't think I can say the word. I'm, a, I'm usually always pro people that want to build balanced lists. I think it's better. I prefer it. I think maybe in this case you've gone a tiny bit too far. I think I would want another jump pack unit. I don't think I like just two of them. I've been to a tournament before... Oh shit, my daughter's up. One sec. 
I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that screaming you can hear. Um, the little one is just having a bit of a nightmare, I think. Um, yeah, very worry. Repulsor Executioner, not so sure on. Just two units of jump marines, not so sure on. I've run two units of jump marines before at a tournament, and I feel like it's too highly dependent. You put too much weight on those two units. Um, I guess reserving aggressors maybe lightens the load, but I still think that I'm running three units of jump marines right now and a unit of terminators, and sometimes I really feel like Man, those Terminators just can't get around the board the same as the Jump Marines. So I guess the Aggressors are going to have the same problem. The Repulsor Executioner for the points feels pretty horrible. I would probably replace that. You could replace that with a bunch of Land Speeders um, or Attack Bikes. You only hear occasional peeps when she shouts at me. I, she, said, she said just there, I don't love Iron Man, I just love Spider-Man. Uh, You do have the Tet Marine, which buffs the Contemptors. And you do start on one CP. Contemptors with multi melters is an interesting choice. I mean, yes, it gives you some some Meltifier on a not on on a not profiling unit. Um, I think the thing I'm concerned with the list is the Executioner. And yeah, one more fast moving unit feels like a must, maybe. Inceptors, attack bikes, land speeders. Um, because even if you decide not to push up and you're waiting for turn three, you're only waiting with. Yeah. I think you need a little bit more, a little bit more close combat in this list. I just think the aggressors are going to be slow, and I guess the the contemptors are going to be quite slow as well. And the executioner, I don't want to say it's a liability, but into some armies it will be right. Uh, I can understand wanting to bring, bring relic contemptors. I think they're the best choice. It's a pity. I hope they get rid of that martial legacy rule. That'll help them a lot, right? Uh, Yes, so something but I'd, I'd swap out the Executioner I tried to run the Repulsor recently unless there's a real reason that you think um, that you can make it run uh, We can trade out the Repulsor for a second Ball Predator Yeah, okay, then run two Ball Predators and run two you, I think you could, you'd could. you have 140 points, you could fit like two land speeder tornadoes there. Or you could fit two regular land speeders and... Um, I don't know what you would do with those 20 extra points though. Yeah, I have no idea what you do with those 20 extra points. You've got Tech Marine, actually. So what you could do is um, change one of your squad of Infiltrators to Incursors and then run a squad of Servitors. They're quite good as Action Monkeys. Uh, Martin says shooting armies will blow up the Executioner quickly. Yeah, that's how I feel. Even a Toughness 8. Um, would Assault Marines fit better than Speeders? They could. The thing about having a lot of Speeders is Speeders can flood... You can Because they move so fast, it's very easy to throw Speeders into the enemy deployment zone for behind enemy lines or uh, Relentless Assault scoring. And it's also very easy to put them right next to an enemy character and just try and shoot two multi melters into their face and hope that that blows the character off the table. So Speeders give you some options that you wouldn't maybe think about all that much. Um, and Blood Angels do seem to synergize with Speeders. People use it all the time. Double Relic Contemptor is a style choice that happens to be decently good. Um, yeah, so I think the Repulsor Executioner has to go. Second Battle Predator could work. 
then another jump unit could work. Land speeders could work. Um, servitors could be there for actions behind enemy lines, sort of shenanigans, that sort of thing as well. Um, the servitors are obviously don't take up any force organization slot because you've got the tech marine, which is useful. Uh, cool. But yeah, it's it's annoying. I've got a repulsor and I've got two land raiders. And I guess I've got the storm raven, but I just don't see them. I don't see any of them as very fieldable, right? Like they're just they've been weak all edition, and I think they're probably even weaker. I mean, they were they were maybe a little bit stronger with armor of contempt. Now they're back to just being weak choices, especially in the meta where there's so much minus four, minus five flying around. Trivial Pursuit, good evening, how are you doing? Alright, next list. Uh, next up, we have a list from... Benno. Good evening, Benno. I think you were in the chat earlier. How's things? Um, it's a Blood Angel successor list with Born Heroes and Whirlwind of Rage. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Born Heroes Whirlwind of Rage, it's plus one to attack. Sorry, it's plus one to hit when you charge or charge, sort of... Actually, is it when you're charged, or is it just when you charge? Uh, a lot of people have been playing this Whirlwind of Rage build. I think Born Heroes is plus one attack, plus one to hit when you charge, and then Whirlwind of Rage is the sort of exploding sixes when you are charged, or charge, or heroic intervention. So it's kind of different. You lose the plus one to wound, you lose the plus to charge, but you get... Did that not load? Come on, you slow website. Load for me. Um, you're very welcome, Albino. Uh, yeah, Born Heroes is just when you charge. Okay, so it's plus one to attack, plus one to your attack roll when you charge, and then Whirlwind of Rage is the exploding sixes on Pro Conventions, charges, or charged. I always really think that if you want to run Whirlwind of Rage, I always want to run it, com I always want to combo it with Unleash Rage, so sixes double burst. Um, Okay, we've got uh, Captain on a Bike with a Combi Malta, Rights of War, and Quake Bolts. Alright, cool, this is similar to how I run my Captain recently. I found taking Quake Bolts off over Armour and Domitus, I didn't like it. I kind of wish I'd played the tournament with Armour and Domitus, because I think Armour and Domitus lets you be a little bit more ballsy with this Captain, and I guess that's how I like to play him. you got Primaris Chaplain on a Bike. Uh, you've taken the Litany that gives you plus one to wound. Makes sense because you don't have it in this build. You've got Soul Warden. Canticle of Hate Master. So we're doing two Litanies. Uh, the Vox of Spirit and Solar Auras become nine inches. And then Wiser Eater, so Litany's cast on twos. All right. So this is a very cool buffing character. Um, he basically gives out nine inch leader. Uh, sorry. A nine inch five up feel no pain against mortals. Potentially a 9-inch uh, advance and charge. I don't know what USB device the computer can't find right now. I imagine it's the baby monitor. Okay. Um, what did I see? Uh, he's also going to give you that 9-inch plus 1 to wound. 9-inch uh, plus 2 to charge. Cool character for 135 points. And also quite survivable because I think he's got 7 wounds, toughness 5, right? Um, and then we've got the Sangry Priest cheap and cheerful, just a jump back on him two squads of infiltrators, that all sounds good um, Dirty Wizard says could we get a trade platform uh, on the Discord that might not be a bad idea uh, definitely, I guess I'll speak to the mods the mods will probably bring it up now you've mentioned it um, we've got someone else running the big squad of Aggressors, cool. I mean, if I was running aggressors like this, I'd probably combat squad them and put them both into reserve and see what happens. Uh, especially if you've got if you've got an aura of plus two to charge, I think that could be pretty cool for the aggressors. You've got one squad of Death Company with all the Thunder Hammers, Power Fist, Infernal Pistol. You've got three squads of Sangry Guard, all with Power Fists and Infernal Pistols. Interesting. Who's the Warlord? It's the Chaplain. Okay, so the Sangry Guard are near the Chaplain. Uh, obviously the chaplain has litany of hate as well. Uh, there it is, yeah. So you get reroll all hits on those power fists. You get plus one to hit, so your power fists are hitting on threes, rerolling all hits. 
Um, you got the Scout Squad. I assume that means you've probably got Land Speeder Storm. Yet we keep seeing that. You've got the two Assault Squads with jump packs and ton of free war gear here. Free Eviscerators, free Infernal Pistols, Thunder Hammers, Plasma Pistols. Um, I feel like I would run the Melt the Guns over the Plasma Pistols if you're allowed to do that. Uh, you've got an Eliminator Squad with Laws Fusils, Thin Stigator Bolt Carbine. I, yeah, I think if this was me, I'd probably try and put the Quake Bolts on the Eliminators. Uh, and then maybe um, put Armor and Dominus on your Captain. But, I mean, it's just what I... I understand why it's cool to have the Captain with Armor, the Quake Bolts, so you can shoot the bolts from... The Twin Bolt Gun, and then you can also shoot its Combi Melt. I understand that's good. But sometimes it's quite hard to make happen. You got the Land Speeder Storm... Then you've got one armager. Okay, and it'll be a, a auto cannon, heavy stubber armager. Interesting. I'm trying to think if I feel like one arm, like, would I, would I drop a score of Sangre Guard to have two armagers in this list? Being that you would still have Death Company, two times Sangre Guard, a Scout Squad, two Assault Squads, two Infiltrator Squads. I feel like I probably would. Um, but then I like to balance my armies a little bit more. I like a little bit more shooting. I think um, in some matchups, I think shooting is invaluable, right? Uh, that's what you were, you were going to do the same with the aggressors. Okay. Um, what's up, Carl? Thanks, thanks for the. The, the review in the recent video. Yeah, the, the, the Prepare for 10th Edition video did really well. Uh, better than I was expecting. Sometimes, that's the thing about YouTube, is sometimes you make a video and you don't expect it to do well. It does really well, so people like the Prepare for 10th Edition video. Um, Rezil agrees one armager is not enough. I mean, one armager will do damage, but the problem is if the, if the enemy focus it down, then one becomes zero very quickly, right? Um, and that's why two probably is the sweet spot, right? Um, Yeah, I feel like one armager is. A, I mean, it will it will do damage, but like if you're up against, let's say you're up against knights, for example, an enemy has six helverins, for example. What's your one helverin going to do? Nothing, right? So you need to maybe like have a couple of them to at least, I don't know, kill one enemy, profile one enemy. Um, a single armager will never even get to shoot at all. Well, you deploy it obscured, and then you'll get to move it out, and you'll shoot it once, I guess. Um. I think you've got enough I think you've got enough fast attack here. And forward deployment. And eliminators move shoot move. To really have two uh, Helverns in this list. I think if if this was me, I would run two Helverns. I mean, there's a reason people run lists with like two Redemptors or two Relic Contemptors, right? Because like you don't see a sync you don't see one. You don't see lists with one Relic Contemptor or one Redemptor, right? And I guess there's a reason behind that. Um, yeah, I would switch that, Benno. I don't think anything else on the list stands out as me as bad. Uh, you got one CP. I mean, that's the only other concern, I guess, is just one CP. You've obviously spent three on this character, making him a beast. Uh, which is maybe fine. Uh, I wonder how they're going to do CP in the new edition. I, I really wonder how that's going to change. I guess it is going to change because they talked about you being allowed three enhancements or something. Uh, but yeah, I, I think... Um, so I've been playing three jump units, like... Haven't I? Yeah, I've been playing two Death Company and one Sangard. And they're all... They're, it's, a, it's three five-man. And I feel like you can just about make that work. It's For me, it feels like just not enough. But... Um, So, like, realistically, probably the best the best you could have is, like, four and two. So if you've got four jump units, I feel like you're probably fine. Well, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six jump units. So I think you could lose one of them to get the Helverns, the second Helverin. I do actually wonder if it would be better to keep the Sangri Guard... And lose the salt squad and the eliminators. 
you'd have to try that. I can't. You you know you just have to try that out in different a couple of games and see what you think is best. Um, especially if the aggressors are coming in from strategic reserve, then I then I think you've got plenty of jump units. You have that bit of fire support. I think that's what makes this list the best. Um, just let me know how you get on. I found this captain on a bike with rights like rights of war is brilliant. Quake bolts is also brilliant. The two of them don't synergize so well together. What I find synergizes well together is Adamant Adamantium Mantle and, and Rites of War. Because then I can just basically park on an objective and be like, I'm here, doing my obsec thing, and even if you throw your whole army at me, then I'll just turn on my 3-up and vulnerable save and I'll still survive the turn. Whereas um, without Rites of... Sorry, without Adamantium Mantle getting Quake Bolts, it felt to me like... I. Some games I got Quake Bolts off, but I always felt like the le the less important games was when I got Quake Bolts off. And the important games where I needed to sit and hold something, I couldn't hold it. So, um, that's sort of my opinion on that character. Uh, so maybe uh, take that as you may, I guess. Raiden says, every time I have one Dreadnought, it dies turn one. Yeah, pretty much. I think I think the only you if you want to run Dreadnoughts, you need to have two. Uh... I don't think two is bad. Like I ran a bunch, I ran to a bunch of tournaments with two. I even ran uh, to a tournament with three this season. That was the closest I actually got to winning a GT as well when I ran three dreadnoughts. So, but that was the list where I had three dreadnoughts, two jump units, and terminators, and it felt like there was so much pressure on those jump units. Like uh, that's what tripped me up in the final game. Actually, it was like a lot, like a big squad of Sangre Guard. Like I think it was maybe a nine-man squad of Sangre Guard. I think I lost them in a bad, um, in a bad matchup, uh, and then like it just, I just couldn't recover from it. So um, three dreadnoughts is rookie numbers. Well, I mean, I like to build a balanced list, Mike. I'm not ever gonna run six dreadnoughts, even though I potentially could run six. I guess. Uh, and when I did it, I was running those super cheap Volkite Contemptors, uh, where they were like 150 points or whatnot. Okay, so a small tweak there, Benno, but overall I think it's a good list. Um, the other option, I suppose, you could say is you could um, you could lose Quake Bolts, right? You could swap in like a, like a double Volkite Relic Contemptor. That could almost be as good as a Helvern. It'd be interesting to know actually what actually does more damage. The Volkite the double Volkite Relic Contemptor or the Helvern. I feel like they both have different strengths. Right? Obviously the 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 Relic Contemptor is good because it can shit out like five mortal wounds forty five inches away, which is really nice. But the Helverns have really long range as well. Don't they have like forty eight inches on their auto cannons? And their auto cannons I guess they're a little bit more swingy because it's like two D three shots. But um 4d3 is enough dice where it's usually re pretty reliable. I'd say most of the time you're probably getting between 6 and 10 shots from those those Halberns. They're like 48 inches, aren't they? Oh, 60 inches. Alright, so they're shooting the whole board. Then, then Halberns is probably the way to go. I'd probably go double Hel Halber in this list. Um, I don't actually own any knights myself. Like, not a single knight. Uh, Mike... How do you feel about painting Blood Angels Knights? You ever done it? <laughs> um, yeah. I wonder if Helverns are going to be as good. Do you know what? I, I, I actually, I think in, I really think in ninth, 10th edition, they're going to fix Blood Angels armor. I think they're going to have fixed it. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of armor that's that's viable to pick for Blood Angels. I hope. If it's not, I'll be really upset. Okay. Uh, I guess come 10th, they won't cost CP any longer. I think you're right, Inks. I don't think they'll cost CP. Um, I don't think we'll see Martial Legacy at all. I don't think, I don't think CP on mustering your army is going to be a thing at all. Uh, I was gonna make a. I was gonna. Yeah, Mike's seen the dollar signs. I. I don't pay that much. I get. I get. I get good rates because I'm a big streamer. Not. Uh, but Mike is just. <laughs> um. I don't think we're gonna see CP much. 
I was going to make a video because they talked a lot, a lot about detachments last week. So I was probably going to make a video on like the new 10th edition detachments, the information that they uh, that they shared and what it might mean this week. Like I think it's worth diving into. Um, but what exactly it means, I, I, I think it means that we're going to see, we're going to see a return of the balance list. I think, you know, we may even see like firstborn predators be viable again. Like you might want Blood Angels players tend to laser laser fix their eyes on ball predators because we love ball predators. They look cool. They fit with the chapter. There are unique predators, so why would we not love them? But, and this is a big but, I guess. I think there might be something to be said about like ball predators are great at killing infantry, but if enemy armor is all really high toughness, like toughness eleven and stuff. Maybe we're going to need last cannons. Like maybe we're going to need to go back to like Devastator squads or because um, they said plasmas might only be wounding vehicles now on fives. So I guess the question is like last cannons are typically more strength than um, multi melters, right? So like last talons, last fusil, like like those sort of high end last cannons. Is that what we're going to need? Um, I don't know. Uh, hello, Damien. Good evening. Um, every time I see your name, Damien, I just think of Austin Powers. I don't know why. I've not seen Austin Powers in so many years, but uh, you, <laughs> it's, it just makes me think like the name's Damien. Damien Powers. Uh, good evening, how are you doing? Brutalis Dreadnought Talons are going to rip through vehicles. I mean, Brutalis Dreadnoughts have a bunch of multi melters on them well. Uh, yeah, I guess I, there's there's too many questions to answer. So in, for the next few months, we're going to have to speculate. I'm excited. I'm excited to bring a balanced list. I had some of the most fun I ever played in 40k in like 2nd and 3rd edition. When my Blood Angels army literally was like Dante and an honor guard, Mephiston, then it would have been like five tactical squads, three devastator squads, a bunch of attack bikes, a bunch of regular predators. Because you got used to play on 3,000 points, none of this 2,000 point stuff. Um, and yeah, I. I had a lot of fun when you, the Blood Angels army was very balanced, and maybe that's why I always tend to build balanced armies and go like full skew melee combat list. Not that I dislike going full skew melee combat. Like, I almost won a, a tournament this this year where like my only shooting unit was one hundred and thirty point squad of eradicators. Right, like I almost did it. I think I fell at the final hurdle. I'm getting very good at falling at the final hurdle. Hurdle, by the way, guys. Um. But yes, um, I do like building balanced armies. I think there's there's a lot of fun in that. And if you ever read any of the the books, the books have Blood Angels is quite balanced. You know, you hear you you know you've got Terminators, you've got you've got Predators, you've got Vindicators. I don't know. I like balanced. Um, all right, Highland Phoenix is an interesting one to discuss. He's going to use speeders in two storms, a Phobos captain. Uh, who can chapter master death company with Lord of Deceit? Okay, so we've got Primaris Captain on the bike, Master of Sanctuary, Wise Orator, the Vox, the Spiritum. He's got Canticle of Hate, and he's got Lenny of Faith, and he's got Lenny of Hate. All right, so feel no pain, re rolls, plus two to charge. He's got the Sangry Priest with the Jump Pack and Rites of War. I've tried this Rites of War Sangry Priest. I don't like it. I always feel like he has to be exposed, and then he dies so quickly because he's a toughness four character with four wounds. I think maybe in an ideal world, sure, you can hide him off the objective, but I feel like in the armies I play against so many times that you're going to get points for him when like things are strung out. Um, and that's the thing about running the rights of war on a captain on a bike with seven wounds and toughness five and a three up and vulnerable save. When shit gets strung out, and let's face it, like... Are you're built? You do play against enemies that get you. When I mean strung out, like you're lose, you know you're losing in troops, but you're trying to hang on and win the game from scoring. Uh, Space Marines are definitely an army that loses a lot of troops and can score okay. 
when you're strung out, you want something survivable to just jump on and be like, haha, here I am with my obsec, and I don't think the Sangri Priest is that, so I don't like it. But, I mean, I guess if you're a better player than me, go for it. Um, we've got the Captain the Phobos Armor. I've run him before. Never run him with Quake Bolts. Uh, he's kind of a sniper. I think he gets one shot. He gets one shot, like... Toughness, uh, Captain Phobos. I think it's one shot, strength four, minus one, three damage. Minus two, sorry, three damage. You can ignore Lookout, sir. I guess he's quite bolting that, so he's got his one shot, which hits on twos, I guess. Um, I can do something. Because it's just one shot, it feels like there's no way to fire. It can be pretty swingy. He has taken the f the Lord of Deceit, which lets him redeploy multiple units. I thought you could only redeploy Phobos units from Lord of Deceit. I've never run Lord of Deceit myself, but I, I was convinced it was Phobos units, right? Uh, yeah, it's full boss units. Select so, three full boss units and redeploy them. All right, so what full boss units have we got in this list? The two squads of infiltrators. So what? You just throw your infiltrators really far forward and then redeploy them. And when do you redeploy them? Um. After both players have deployed their army, select up to three. So you don't redeploy them. Before you know who's going first. And you can put them back into strategic reserve. I mean... Eh. I'm not sure I find that that strong, Highland Phoenix. Um, I mean, infiltrators with helix gauntlets generally are, like, reasonably survivable and can be deployed reasonably well. Uh... The thing I don't like about the Phobos Captain is he doesn't do any damage in melee. Uh, I've used him before. He has like eight attacks, I think. Yeah, so it's five attacks base, plus one from his knife, plus two if you charge. So he does get eight attacks, but and they are a weapon skill too, but they're just strength four and no AP. So he doesn't really do any killing in melee, and like for 120 points, no killing, no damage in melee. Mm. I don't love it. I mean, for 120 points, I could basically get like a captain on a bike with the teeth of Terra, and I guess he could have a warlord trait, and he could have about 11 attacks, 10 attacks. Um, wouldn't even necessarily have to be a captain on a bike, it'd just be a captain with a jump pack. But if you did do a captain on a bike who has four attacks, you give him the teeth of Terra, he's got seven attacks, you give him a warlord trait like. Imperium Sword, he's got eight attacks plus reroll charge, then he then he then he charges and he gets up to ten attacks. So you can have a you can have a you can have a captain on a bike with ten attacks. And how many points is he? And that would be ten two damage attacks hitting at strength five, minus two, two damage each. And he's a hundred points, twenty points cheaper. Like I just think that's much better. I mean you could also put Quake Bolts on him if you wanted to. Uh Maybe if we get a full boss captain with a power sword or something, uh, maybe I'm interested. But right now, I mean, I've again, I've run the full boss captain. I used to run him with master crafted weapon so that he could. It wasn't master crafted weapon because his, his weapon is master crafted. I think. Um, I used to run him with master marksman, which made his which made a sniper rifle four damage. And like some games I played him when he generally sniped characters to death in one shot, but like it just he still didn't feel that useful. Um We got Relic Terminators, uh Lightning Claws, Chain Fists, Auto Cannons, Storm Bolters, cool. I like Relic Terminators. Don't know if I like them enough to choose them over regular firstborn terminators and that they get no teleport homer but the teleport homer is very situational if you've, i suppose if you've got a lot of jump units the teleport homer doesn't really matter and he does he's got multiple sangry guard he's got a thunder hammer death company he's got 10 van vets with chainsword and lightning claws and a bunch of storm shields and lightning claws and some infernal pistols and some hammers 
So this could be combat squaded nicely. He's got the 10-man squad of scouts, which will get combat squaded across the two land speeders. He's got the Reaper, which I've been playing for a while now, and um, I still think I think like I think Ball Predators are better than Reapers. But I think it's maybe part of it because I'm biased towards Ball Predators. But I think I think if I it's weird because like I think the ideal option for me would be to run two Ball Predators for like 220 points. I think that's the best use of points for like anti-chaff killing stuff um but i understand like i'm doing it as well i'm running a single reaper because i don't want to spend 220 points uh i also run the reaper because mike painted it for me and it looks fucking awesome yeah that's that's the main reason that i run the, the reaper mike 100 percent uh the plasma blaster is free on the relic terminators good call then include that for sure uh, can Relic Terminators take a heavy flamer res? I never run them. Um, so two Infiltrators, the Reaper, the Whirlwind, two Sangar, Death Company Terminators. So at that point, that's very similar to what I'm running. Uh, the Chaplain and the Priest and the Captain. I like the Van Vets with Storm Shields. I think you do need... I, I think you want some units with Storm Shields on your list, so I like that. The land speeder storms. So, I mean, I think this would be a good list for scoring relentless assault. Possibly, it's also quite a good list for retrieve battlefield data. I guess at that point, the question is, what's the third secondary? Maybe he's going to go oath, drop the relic terminators in the middle of the board, back them up with the gladiator reaper. Maybe back them up with a squad of van vets with storm shields. So, so maybe this list is actually quite good. Uh, I'm not sure I find any value in redeploying my two squads of infiltrators, though. I think I would just rather... If you're going to spend 120 points on a captain, I would just make him a killy monster. And He said... He can chapter master the Death Company. Okay. It is important to have chapter master rerolls for a death company. I do agree with that. I just I don't think his gun is worth. I don't think his gun is worth it. And I don't think he kills anything in melee. But then it's funny because I always talk about building these balanced armies, but then you put like a captain with a gun and I'm like, oh god, I don't like it. Why would you not just want ten? Um why'd you not just want ten attacks on the captain? Yeah, I think if there was another unit in this list that was gonna be able to hang out next to the captain and get a lot of value from those captain rerolls, because let's face it, that captain isn't really getting into melee. He's moving six inches and he's gonna want to shoot his gun. I suppose he could advance, but you're probably not going to advance because you're probably going to want to the Quake Bolt to hit on twos. So the captain isn't getting into melee. So I feel like if you wanted to make this list work, Highland Phoenix, I think you would need something to hang out with that captain. Desolation Marines, there you go. Why didn't we think of those? Desolation Marines, quick, I'll get them out of the box from behind me. Uh, if you had a five-man squad of Desolation Marines, 175 points, you could probably sneak that in here. Then I'm okay with that captain. You give rerolls to all that indirect fire, all those super crack missiles. I think Desolation Marines are going to be good next edition, honestly. Uh, everybody laughed at me in the chat for buying Strike Force Augustus. All you guys, uh, we've got 42 viewers, we only got 19 likes at the moment. Please hit the like button, guys. Um, everybody laughed at me in the chat. They said, John, you don't know what you're doing. You're a sucker. You should never have bought this. There's nothing good inside it. Everybody said that, except maybe Mike. I think they'll make the Brutalis and the Desolators good in 10th edition. I think it would be dumb for them not to come out of the 
come out the gate being really good. Uh, they've got t-shirt cannons. Well, yeah, but I think I think they'll I'll, they'll be the most devastating t-shirt cannons ever, Benno. Uh, Lee primed his yesterday. Nice. I haven't even started building mine. That's why. That's why as we get closer to tenth, I'm going to do some nights where I'm not. I'm not doing battle reports and I'm not doing army list shows when we're only like a month away from tenth because it'll be pointless. And I've got loads that I want to get done. So we'll have we'll have like a hobby. You guys will be sick of seeing me go live. We'll have hobby hangout every night for like a month. Saw boys have an appearance only a mother could love. Well, I'm a father, so I can love them. Uh, and I don't, I don't really care for how they look. I mean, everybody said that the guns look a bit silly. Uh, but I think Desolation. Uh, they play. You played them last week, Lauren, and they're under your MVPC. All right, Highland. There, the chat has spoken. You need to drop something and include a squad of Desolation Marines, and then you're allowed to keep this captain. Otherwise, you have to get rid of this captain and get a real Blood Angels captain in there, one that's got a weapon that has more than zero AP. Because zero AP on a weapon for a Blood Angels captain sucks. All right. Mount the rocket launcher tubes on servo arms on the backpack. I wasn't sure how much conversion work they're going to need to do that. Uh, did you do that, Dirty Wizard? When should we expect the new data slate? Um, I suppose there should be a new data slate in the next week or so, right? Because it's supposed to be three monthly. So there should be one early April. And then beyond that, I would guess um, we've just got 10th edition. We're just going, we're rolling into 10. Uh, all right, Rob Bloom. Sorry, I said Bloom. Rob Broom is up next. Uh... A 2mm plastic rod mounted on the back uh, like the Predator laser. It looks class. Um, if you guys have got cool pictures of the Desolation Marines, share them in Discord and I'll have a look at them. Uh, and if you've, if you've done any conversions, we will... I, I believe that we are getting one Lee because they're fixing the bug. I was going to say the bug. It's not a video game. Uh, they're fixing the broken... Car skin rules, I know that. I've heard that from the grapevine, that they're fixing that car skin rules because for one CP with a 100 point unit, you can do like 24 mortal wounds in a turn, and that's ridiculously stupid and also dumb. Uh, Mike's going to post a picture now. All right, Mike. Cool. Do it. Did you convert yours? All right. So Rob is going to the Bristol GT. He really wants to take Gilliman. Says he spent close to two weeks painting them up. Any advice, uh, please let me know. Awesome. Someone's, someone else is going to run Gillum into a GT. I love it. Gillum in the Lord of War. He's a beast. Let's see Let's see how this goes. All right, cool. That's going to be a fun list to look at. So we've got the captain on the bike. Infernal Pistol, Rights of War, Teeth of Terror. Interesting. Very offensive. Um, if you're watching earlier in the stream, I was just saying that I think Rights of War combos crazy well with Armor and Domus. But I guess the question would be how you do a lot of damage in melee if you if you give up Teeth of Terra here. Because you need to spend 10 more points to get Thunderhammer. Do you know what? My Gilliam enlist had one squad of Infiltrators and one squad of Incursors because I needed the 10 points elsewhere and I think Incursors with a mine are okay. Um... So maybe put a thunder hammer on that captain, and give him armor and dominus. That would be my advice. Uh, Teeth of Terror is nice. I get you. But I think which room did you put it in? Uh, General. Is that where I went? Lobby text. That's funny. That's my. It's my. I was gonna say it's 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 my Discord, but I don't know. I don't know any of the channels. Okay, I'm very guilty of just speaking in the members channel. Can I bring this picture out of the? Here we go.
So where does it normally attach to the gun? Does the gun have those little ridges all the way down it might? I think it looks a little bit more sane with them on the backs as opposed to like on the gun here. Uh. All right, so uh, Death Company with hammers. Death Company with hammers. Uh, in my Gilman list, I ran one with hammers and one with Infernal Fistols. Fower swords, the whole squad. But I mean, this seems fine. The Sangre Ancient with Soul Warden and. An Infernal Pistol and the Wrath of Baal. Okay, I didn't run that with mine. Um, trying to think what I ran. Two was my third. Oh yeah, I was running a Temp Marine. I was running the Tarax though. You get two squads of Sangre Guard all Infernal Pistols. You get the Scout Squad times ten. You get the Terminators with a bunch of Thunder Hammers. In my list, uh, and I'm assuming you've got shitloads of CP because you're running Gilliman. Yes, you have five CP. In my list, I swapped out the Terminator Thunderhammer Sergeant. So I ran four with Thunderhammers, and I ran the Sergeant with a Lightning Claw, and I Mastercrafted it, because a Mastercrafted Lightning Claw gives you six, two damage Lightning Claw hits on the charge, and one, one damage Lightning Claw hit on the charge. And um, it's, re it's really effective at killing two wound Marines, or, or two... Uh, Human Marines, whatever, you know, because it's going to wound a lot with Blood Angels, right? Because the plus one to wound. It's going to be super. I guess it's just going to be if you if you mastercraft the Lightning Claw in here, and I think you can totally do that because you've got five CP. You kill you 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 kill a lot of two wound models. Thunder Hammers are really inefficient against like one or two wound models. Uh, so I really, I was running this squad before like. Three hammers and two lightning claws, and the lightning claws were on the shit old guys. But it actually turned out what I liked was taking damage on guys with storm shields because they can essentially be on like a one up or zero up save, and then have the sergeant with the extra attacks and the lightning claws. And the fact that six of those lightning claws can do two damage um, is really good. I still don't understand GW's dumb rules on how single V double lightning claw works. And adding any relic ability. So if you mastercraft a lightning claw. Res. And you have 7 attacks. If you think about it this. Your base attacks is like what? On a terminator sergeant your base attacks is 3. You get plus 2 from charge. And then you get 1 from each of the lightning claw right? So 6 of those attacks. Can be done on the 2 damage lightning claw. And then the 7th attack. Technically comes from having that that other lightning claw, so it can so six attacks can be done on two damage. One attack would be done on one damage, um, because like the, I guess those first base attacks of three plus the two from charging, you get to choose which weapon you want to do them right. Um, oh, you don't understand why they made it so stupid. Oh well, maybe somebody else in the chat understands now. Um, so it just means that I found this Terminator Sergeant with lightning claw to make the squad way better than it was before. Um, Maybe it just makes the squad more versatile. Uh, because I did play like one game where I actually mastercrafted the sergeant with a, a thunder hammer. So I had a four damage thunder hammer on the sergeant. The thing that I found with that is it can still be quite swingy, right? Because thunder hammers just hit on fours. Whereas like a mastercrafted lightning claw is going to hit on threes if you're within 12 of Gillum and you're rerolling ones. Threes rerolling ones is actually like really reliable. Um, whereas fours isn't and fours rerolling ones is. Uh, still can be quick, pretty unreliable. You got two squads of assault marines. You got the whirlwind in there. You got the land speeder storm in there, and that's kind of list. Okay, uh, my th first thoughts on this list is you would benefit loads from having like a gladiator reaper in there that can hang out with Gilliman, uh, or or like double ball predator because I ran both um with Gilliman, the Gladiator Reaper and the Ball Predator. And those things become Iron Hands level of, of shooting if they can reroll all their ones, which is what Gilliman lets them do. Uh 
they also like in some ways like they have dual purpose in that they look out Sir Gilliman as well because Gilliman's on nine wounds so if you park a Ball Predator one inch closer to the enemy right next to Gilliman to get rerolls they also can't shoot Gilliman because you've got a fucking Ball Predator there not many armies are going to like blast through toughness seven toughness eight vehicles and then haven't I mean armies will blast through them but they're not going to blast through them and then typically have enough firepower to drop Gilliman in a single turn so you can kind of put Gilliman in places where maybe he wouldn't be super safe into. And I also found, and I don't know how many people have fought World Eaters yet, um, but I have found that, like, let's say you're playing a list like this, where you're, all your damage in this list is coming from melee, right? Like, you could argue a little bit of damage is coming from the Infernal Pistols, um, and there is a decent amount of Infernal Pistols. There are some bolters here, um, there's a couple of plasma pistols here as well, but I would say, like, if you had to split this list, 80% of your damage is coming from melee, 20% of it's coming from shooting, but most of the shooting's only going to actually happen if you're within six inches of the enemy, right? And trust me, you don't want to be shooting corn berserkers if you're within six inches of them, because if you just kill one berserker, if you roll badly or something, then those berserkers would basically charge you. Uh, so, arguably, you can't even shoot berserkers with infernal pistols um so yeah my, my thought is like this this sort of list right now is like pretty hard countered by world eaters uh i beat world eaters because i had a gladiator reaper and what other shooting did i have Oh, I had the Terax. The Terax is pretty useful. Dirty Wizard thinks Hellblasters have a place. Uh, a Stern Guard squad could have a place, but Stern Guard from re reinforcements could have a place. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 probably bad to look at a list saying like this gets countered really hard by this one army. Well, you might never fight that one army, so if things. Um, even if they blood surge into engagement, pistols can shoot them. Yeah, I guess my point is, though, Chip Hazard, let's say the only squad you've got in range of them is that squad with pistols. You shoot all the pistols. Let's say, you, let's say, let's say the five infernal pistols hitting on threes, so you make about three hits. You wound on threes, twos, so you make two or three wounds. So let's say, on, let's say you kill two or three berserkers. Well, the other two berserkers just got into melee with you. And they're going to get to fight first because you didn't charge them anymore. You don't get your plus one to charges or anything like that because you didn't count as charging. So the two berserkers that are left are probably going to murder those five Sangray Guard. So you actually hurt yourself more by shooting them with Infernal Pistols than you would have if you just charged them. But if you did just charge them, then they pay one CP and fight on death and kill you anyway. So it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't against World Eaters, right? Um... And that's where, like, my game against World Eaters, my Gladiator Reaper was 100% MVP. He probably, the Gladiator Reaper killed, like, well, it never died at the end of the game, so it had five rounds of, like, he gets 40 shots, basically, right? Like, 24 off the main cannon, somewhere between 8 and 16 of the other bolters, 4 from the stubber, D3 rocket pods, so it's doing, it's, it's able to kick out, like, 40 damage a turn, Fair enough, it has to roll the hit, roll the wound, roll for saves. So realistically, it's probably doing 10 damage a turn. But like, so you're telling me my Gladiator Reaper ate up like, I don't know, 50 wounds off the World Eater's armies? Cool. I mean, that's probably, even if those were squads of Berserkers, you know, it probably made its points back two or three times over just the Reaper. Um Yeah, and it's it was for me it was easy to screen because I had a small squad of blade guard veterans and I also used Gilliman a little bit to screen it as well. Um, Hellblasters are so expensive. Yeah, I mean I think if you were wanting cheap shooting with like plasma, would you not be better just running stern guard? The whole squad can take combi plasmas, right? Red New Rose fought World Eaters on Friday and kept them at bay with Hellblasters and Eradicators and shooting them with Infernal Pistols kept them at bay with movement. I mean, they're fast, man. I'm surprised you kept them at bay with movement. Uh, you know that 
they can get like two units can get a 22 inch turn one movement which is insane actually uh, when I fought world eaters I felt they were so fast they were on me like they were on me killing me in my deployment zone in turn one basically I had to sacrifice some of my forward deploying infiltrators just to screen my deployment zone because I knew that they were going to be on top of me in like turn one basically um, but yeah I think and I guess this is why I advocate a balanced list because I don't like going to tournaments where I feel like, hey, if, if I run into world eaters, I'm not going to do so well. Um, but I mean, it's valid. You might never. You might be going to an event. There's no world eaters, uh, so maybe you don't have to worry about this. Uh, I like everything that's in the list. I like having two Sangre Guard. I like having the Ancient. I like having the Death Company. Um, I like the Captain. I like Gilliman. I like the Terminators, I made a small comment on them. Double Assault Squad, so, I mean, you've got ways of doing Relentless Assault. You've definitely got ways of doing uh, Retrieve Nakman data or Battlefield data. Uh, you probably you probably even have a way of doing Oath of Moment in this list, because you could probably park your Terminators with Gilliman in the centre of the board. Uh, I feel like Gilliman on a 3-up in Van Save typically saves all day long against a lot of things. I, you also have so many CP in your Gilliman based list uh, in that quite often it's very ch you're, you're free to be like, ah, I'm just going to re-roll a 3 up and vulnerable save because I've got 8 CP at this point in this game. Hammerfall bunker would you get well against Berserkers? Yeah, I mean, but we never see anyone run Hammerfall bunkers, do we? Um, so Everything in the list is fine. I guess my question is if this is what you're comfortable playing, Rob, then knock yourself out. Uh, if you think that the terrain is going to be well enough where you can obscure a lot of units every single turn and you are not going to take very much fire at all and you're going to be able to jump from position to position and swarm the enemy, then this is a great list. If it's not going to be that, and there's going to be armies that you're going to need to blow up some stuff in the shooting phase with, then I think I would find a way to get a Gladiator Reaper in here, or a Double Ball Predator. I think both would be good choices. Um, I'm trying to think what I did in this list. So, compared to you, I basically lost one squad of Sangre Guard, I lost the Sangre Ancient, and basically Scouts, and I replaced them with a Terax, Stern Guard squad with three combi plasmas and two multi meltas. A tech marine with a free combi plasma, sorry, a free combi melta and a plasma cutter and a flamer. And then uh, I also run the Voidsman at arms because they're really good uh, at scoring like battlefield data behind enemy lines. Um, we have seen a few people run the utility librarian. He has, he has been okay. Uh, he is a decent character. He does get run a bit. Um, yeah, so so this one, this list is very terrain dependent, I feel like. Uh, if the terrain is good enough, then you could win a lot of games with this list. I do like having five Thunder Hammers on the Death Company, though, if you have no Priest. Like, I, I think... Because by having no priest, it means you're only going to get 16 thunder hammers as opposed to like 20 that you would get with the salt doctor. And so I think it's worth having a squad of death company with five thunder hammers in it if you've got no priests, so you can get the full 20 attacks. Um, yeah, share your uh, share your Gilliman in the chat, Rob. I'd love to see another Blood Angels painted Gilliman. Hey, if you've done a good job, we can use him in a thumbnail because. Uh, Gilliman might be getting some serious love in ninth edition. Eh, I keep wanting to say ninth edition. In tenth edition, he might be getting he might be getting some play. Um, we'll have to get into the new detachments soon and check that out. So that's it for tonight, guys. Um, we are getting to the point where we're near the end of the edition, so there is less and less lists submitted each week. Oh, you're here, Rob. You got any questions? Hello, by the way. I thought I saw you hanging around, and then when I started speaking about your list, you didn't say anything. Uh, what are you thinking, Rob? How confident do you feel about that? Have you ran this amount of jump units before? Like, 
I assume you saw some of the games that I played recently where the terrain was pretty... I, was, I wouldn't say dire, pretty sparse. Um... How sparse are we talking the terrain going to be at the event? Like, is it going to be quite dense, the boards, do you think? Or, like, how many pieces of obscuring terrain are we talking? Because, um, the event that I was at, you were like, uh, is ITC terrain. I always get confused by the terrain. Hold on. UK ITC terrain. Well, I got a map. If I type that in. Um, here's your GT. They got the train, train and mission pack. Oh, cool. We'll look at the train pack. Oh, it's this. Okay, yeah. I mean. So this is what this is the terrain we use on stream. So like my first thought is having played this terrain, right? Multiple times, Rob. These pieces here, these single lines are dense cover. They're ruined walls, they're three inches high, and they use the dense rules, which means I was going to say, what can you hold those with in this list, right? You can't hold those with infiltrators. You can't hold them with your death company. You can't hold them with your sangre guard. You can maybe hold them with your terminators or your whirlwind. But these, this terrain is nightmarish for blood angels. Um, you have no unit that you can put on this terrain realistically and hold it. If you're playing a, like, if you're playing Votan and they line up their gun line here. There's no chance you can hold this. Likewise, well, you're not going to hold that one because it's really near their deployment zone anyway and there's going to be no cover from that side. But th these dense cover pieces are terrible. Uh, that's just what they play in the UK. Um, so if you actually think of like obscuring pieces on this board, it's eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's basically a whole quarter of the board almost. Like, like this area here, I'd say is like almost like, maybe not quite a quarter, a fifth, a sixth of the board, where there's just nothing that's obscuring. So, um, anything that they set up here, on top of these pieces here, is going to be able to just plink away at models that are on here. Your only chance to do it, and I've done this myself, is like daisy chain. So you have like one incursor or infiltrator touching this terrain, daisy chain to another guy, and then the other three of them are behind the wall. So you're at least getting your plus one to your armor save. Uh, and then you're hoping that maybe you can sticky this. Right? So then it's yours and you don't need to leave models in the open to hold it. Um, again, this is difficult terrain on number two. Because these objectives will be almost unholdable with Space Marines. Because the, the... I mean, the, these two are good to go. But you're going to have some... You're going to have to hold this one here. Uh... And on this map, I always say focus on one side. So, like, take yours and these two, or take yours and these two. Uh, and if you get behind this, then you have, like, really good jump trajectory across the board. So you, you're going to want units behind there, but holding these ones with just minus one to hit. Like, Space Marines don't really serve... If they have re-rolls, for example, like, let's say they're Necrons and they got a bunch of, like, nine-man squad of Scorpic destroyers that get plus one to hit, so they're hitting on threes. You made the minus one to hit because you're behind the terrain. Well, they've got plus one to hit from the Silent Kings. So they're hitting on threes anyway. They're re-rolling everything. So their hit rate is 88%. So I think they're strength six. So their hit rate 88%. I think they're each of them gets basically two shots, right, on the Scorpic Destroyers. Uh, I just played against this and, like, it was really... It was, it was a really difficult game. Uh... Locust Heavy Destroyers. Uh, must just be regular Destroyers. Uh, no, maybe it's this. No, which is the shooting ones? You had a big squad of the shooting ones. Um, I thought it was, they were called Lo 
Maybe it's just low crowd. No, that's it. Yeah. So he's got like a squad of six of these guys and one heavy destroyer in the squad. That's it. So they hit on threes. You make them minus one to hit because you're behind the train. Well, they don't give a. Sh they've got plus one to hit from the Silent King. So you're basically taking. Strength 6, minus 3, realistically 2 damage. They're heavy 3, oh, they're worse than I thought. So yeah, you, you he's going to shoot you 18 times, 88% chance to hit. So it's about 15 hits, he wounds you on 3, so you're going to have to take 10 saves at minus 3, and statistically every every failed save is a dead marine. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, good luck holding those with your, your minus 1 to hit is doing fucking nothing for you here. Uh And, that, and, and and that's why I would say that, like, having a tank, like a Gladiator Reaper, or having a Ball Predator with Toughness 7 that can be behind here and actually live through a turn. In one of these games, I actually ended up having my Whirlwind go on to one of these middle midfield objectives because I had nothing else that... I, I basically just put the Whirlwind on one of these objectives to draw fire because, like, oh, if he sees my Whirlwind, he knows that's my fight last, so you'll shoot at it. So maybe some of my units on the other objectives will stay alive and sticky them for me. So this is, a, this is a really hard map as well for Marines. Um, I've never actually played this terrain layout. It looks weird, man. Um, it feels like that piece is round the wrong way, but okay. Uh, then I guess on this map I would focus on this one side. Get units and uh, cover here, 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 here. So this one would be fine with your list. Like I, I feel like the terrain here is good enough. Uh, because we're on 10 pieces of... No, we're actually on, only on 8 obscuring as well. No, 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 we're on 10. This was what I was saying about the Canadian tournament, Rezio. Sam was getting to play on a board with 14 pieces of obscuring terrain. I was like, 14 pieces of obscuring terrain is fucking unheard of here in the UK. Like, you know, the first two boards are 8. 8 pieces. Uh, and then this one's 10. This one's 10. Again, there's objectives here with no real cover on them, and, and Marine, like, Blood Angels don't really hold objectives with no cover on them. Uh, and also, in one of the tournaments, I think it was LVO? Yeah, I think it was LVO. The final game, or the semi-final game, the guy played um, Harlequins, and every single objective had a big piece of um, obscuring terrain on top of it. And I was like, oh man, I never, like, if if... In the UK, you never get to play a six objective map where every every objective is in in an obscuring ruin. I'm like, are you joking me? Like, that changes the game so much. Um, and then and then that's the same map as the first one. And this map is probably quite doable with the with the all jump units so you're gonna have three games that are really really difficult i guess uh if you go for that og all jump infantry list um but here's the here's the kicker if you if you get good matchups on the on the on the two maps with crappy terrain then maybe you can go ahead and win this tournament i just i generally i guess don't play like that uh but, you know what, I don't win fucking tournaments, regardless of how hard I try, so uh, maybe I'm not the best person to listen to, but there's my two cents. Um, yeah, I mean, every event you go to, the variance can be high or low in the terrain, and uh, I just know for a fact that, like, if I ever get to play on a map with 14 pieces of skewering terrain, I'll go outside and do a little happy rain dance. Um, Gilliman on those objectives could survive. Yeah, Gilliman. You're 100% right. The problem is with, on most of those maps, so those five objective maps with an objective in the centre, you're probably going to want Gillum in the centre. He's a fucking monster in melee combat. He gets so much, he gets more powerful when he gets within half range, remember, because he rapid fires. Something that I didn't realise about Gillum in, um, he's a monster. Blood Angels never really play with monsters, so he can shoot his rapid fire weapon in combat using the big guns never tire rule. So if you're stuck in combat, you can still rapid fire his strength six minus one two damage bolter, whatever it is. Um, so you're gonna want Gillum in the middle. Uh, it's just gonna be difficult to hold those pieces where it's like 
where where it's um minus one to hit you into some armies like like i said i played necrons on that and it was brutal uh and i had a little bit more armor that i could sit on the objective or i had a little bit more storm shields that i could sit on the objective when you and the family finally make it to vacation in the states i would love to res but i don't i don't think i'm i'm so precious about my models i don't know if i if i was going on a family vacation i don't i don't think i would take my models in a plane um Changes being, uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, good luck anyway, Rob. I hope I gave you some food for thought. Uh, but just be aware that those ones with those tiny little piddly dense covers in them, they're really difficult to hold in a Blood Angels list. And that's what I typically end up playing here in the UK, and that's maybe why I don't run that list, because... Like, it's, I almost won an event running all melee. So it can just be a... You can, you know, you could just... What you've got is, is good. You could just go with it. Maybe you don't fight a really shooting army on those maps and you're 100% fine and you win. You can win the event. Uh, I guess that's the risk you have to take. And I don't have the right or wrong answer for you, but that's my two cents, guys. Thanks so much for watching tonight, guys. Um, please consider liking the stream, subscribing... Uh, following us on Facebook as well, uh, if you haven't already done that. Uh, we do have a Blood Angels Commander Facebook page, which I am trying desperately to grow. We just got over 500 uh, on the Facebook page. If you haven't hit like on the Facebook page yet, I'd appreciate it. Um, 507, actually. Um, and uh, I'll be back, I'm sure I'll be back a couple of times this week uh, with some more content, especially talking 10th edition. And... Um, Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Have an amazing night. Uh, thanks, as always, for the support. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you've got an army list you want reviewed, uh, send it my way. Uh, we'll get you on, I was going to say, I don't, in the next couple of weeks. Like, the queue right now is not very big. I think most people are maybe doing what I'm doing and starting to focus on 10th edition, maybe? Uh, but if you do want to submit your list, you're more than welcome. Uh, we'll catch you next time. By the blood, are we made strong? Peace.